Hello, everyone. This is going to be a webinar regarding the where, where to start with jazz improvisation. We're still waiting for a few um, attendants, but hopefully um, we're going to be able to take loads of keynotes um, in regards to jazz improvisation. So I'm going to talk about the most basic aspects of playing improvisation and where to actually start. Um, many times, people are trying to start uh, with, with wrong tools. And this is why I thought about running this webinar, because I often get asked by various students and uh, classical players, even jazz players, um, where to really start as there's so much um, publications and material out there regarding the um, scales, harmony, that many times people are really confused about what to really do. Um, so before I proceed to theoretical and practical knowledge, let's start uh, with me playing the blues. Hello, Marta, we got the first attendant. Hopefully, Marta, you'll learn something about jazz improvisation from this video. Um, so let me just play for you um, a little improvisation that um, that definitely is the destination that you're heading to after today's video. So I'm gonna use simple um, amount of materials for improvisation and I'm not gonna play anything uh, too complicated. It's gonna be the uh, blues by Charlie Parker called Now It's The Time. I'm just gonna take maybe um, two chords for my improvisation. I'll play the head first, so the main melody, and then I'm gonna play two choruses and then head out. Um, I'm using uh, the software called iReal uh, on the iPad um, for playing the, the backings because it's a very efficient software because you can slow down uh, the um, you know the the speed of the uh, song and you can also loop various things at the same time. So then, um, just for now, just let's, let's have a go for it. So hopefully you're gonna hear everything. If not, just let me know in the comments. And if you have like burning questions right now, just let me know in the comments as well. I'm happy to answer them as quickly as possible. Okay, let's get going. played again the main melody which is now which was now the time by Charlie Parker which was a famous bebop saxophonist and what followed was an improvisation 
based on one scale, one scale only. And I strongly believe that this is where we should all start. You should start by incorporating only minimum amount of material, meaning just one single scale that consists of five notes. This scale is called a minor pentatonic scale. And depending on which instrument you play, you're going to have to start on a different note. So I'm talking here about the basic F uh, major blues. Um, and if you're playing a concert instrument like um, a guitar, a piano, or harp, um, you just you just have to start from F. Um, the structure for this pentatonic scale then is uh, we start the first note followed by minor third, so one flat three, tone up to four, tone up to five, and then minor seventh, so another minor third on top of it. So if I would start from the F note, we'd go F, A flat, B flat, C, and E flat. So if you're playing a concert instrument, this is the scale you, you're going to be using. So for alto saxophone, which is in, in E flat, we have to start on the D note. Um, and one little note here. So although although um, you're you're playing the blues in F, you're always going to have to start on a D note. As saxophone is a transposing instrument, so sounding F is a D note on saxophone on alto saxophone. Similarly, if you're playing a tenor saxophone, you have to start on the G note. And so, so the notes for starting on the D from the D are going to be D, F, G, A, and C. So let me just play you this one. Starting on the bottom D, two octaves, the minor D minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> tenor saxophone you would start on the G and then the, the recipe will never change it's always going to be one flat three four five and flat seven but it's just starting out that you that you starting with will be different so in the case of tenor saxophone or a trumpet or um, soprano saxophone you would be going G B flat C D and F um, so let's talk about how we can um, incorporate that scale into our playing. So first of all, the good news is that a minor pentatonic scale can be used on the whole form of the blues, and there are no wrong notes there. And because of that, it makes it a very, very efficient scale to um, to practice it over the form of the blues. Hey, Slavik, how are you, how are you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining us. Just doing a webinar about where to start with jazz improvisation. Feel free to ask any questions on the way. Um, so then, if uh, the first thing you need to, you need to know is to how to practice the scale itself. The, the most basic way is to actually, you know, just to familiar, so familiarize yourself with the notes by going up and down, as I just showed you. Make sure you just play a couple of times. And then you just have to invent new exercises that, um, that are gonna, that, that is gonna ingrain your, your knowledge of the scale because it's not enough to just go up and down, because that's clearly the only, only is gonna teach you how to play scale up and down. But once you, once you do it with, uh, for instance, the metronome, as I showed you before, um, then you, you might try to incorporate that with the play along. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna quickly show you the, um, how to actually play with the play along. So I'm gonna put ivory long, um, the tempo is 115, and I'm going to play, I'm going to start on the very first beat. This app is always counting you a bar or two in. So let me just change it to one bar. Like so, let's just have a listen to the counting in so we know what the tempo is. So. So that, that little four, four beats in the beginning, one, two, three, four, is giving you the tempo um, that normally you, you take from uh, practicing with the metronome. So you can, you can risk and say that the play along here 
as your new metronome. And of course, it's much more fun to play with the playing, so I encourage you to do it. So I'm going to put it on now and just, just see how I'm going up and down two octaves of the D minor and pentatonic, just to get going with the scale. Let's have a go. <laughs> If you're just going to go in in minims, so two beats per note, you're going to end up on the second bar from the very end. Um, just make sure you don't make any mistakes. You can, of course, then um, change it to crotchets, like so. Let me try. And if you run out of the notes, just keep, keep on playing them up and down, like so. <laughs> that you want to um, get used to playing along with the band, with the, in this case, an artificial band, but it's still a pretty good exercise to do it with the play along. And of course, to know the scale. Now, I'll give you two more exercises so that you'll know, you'll, you'll get, get the grip of the scale uh, even more. So something simple to start with, maybe a little motif. Um, we can express those motifs in numbers. So why don't we go the first, second, third, and back to one. So first note, second, third note, and one. So one, two, three, one. It's gonna sound like this. And I just started on the D, playing D, F, G, and then back to D again. And then I'm gonna go to the next note, the scale, like so. That's my, it's going to put all the notes of that pentatonic into the right drawers in your head. Um, so that when the time comes to, for improvising, um, you're not going to be, your brain is not going to be occupied by, by thinking about what the notes are of that pentatonic scale. You want to be as free as possible um, in this case. So, then, uh, so that's the second exercise and maybe one more. Uh, which uh, we call uh, thirds. I, I like to call them digital thirds because it's going to be starting on the first note. You jump over one note, so in digits that would be one, going to the three, one down to the two, jump again to four, down to three, and so on and so on. So in other words, you go, you, you, you skip a note, you go one down, you skip a note, and you go one down. So we call this one a digital third. So let me just play it for you. Starting with D. And of course, don't forget to go backwards, so from the high D in this case. You know, use the metronome for control and for practicing this this particular um, uh, exercise, and always try to go of, uh, use perfectionism um, in a way that you don't make mistakes on the way, because that really helps later on um, to to see if you really know the scale. So as I said before, you have to just make sure that you know the the, the notes before we dive into the improvisation itself. So the 
Second, the second part is going to be to incorporate this again with the play on. So the same way you, you've done it uh, with the <clears throat> going with the scale up and down, you can do the same thing uh, with the motif that I mentioned. So one, two, three, one. Let me just demonstrate. <laughs> Set, set the iron on on uh, zero repeats, but you can you can put on let's say twenty or thirty repeats and just keep going with it um, until you you not making any mistakes anymore. So that's the very fixed way of practicing things, just to get just to put into your head the notes of the scale. Now let's talk about the creative side of it. So once you uh, know how to play this uh, motif on the whole um, uh, scale range. Uh, what you can do is to pick a random note um, and apply the motif to it. Meaning, if I start on a D, then I'm going to do a break, and then I'm going to pick a G and play the same motif. So we end up with uh, short phrases, short motifs, played from different random notes. So you can try to do that without a play along first, like so. So what's important about this exercise is that the whole creative uh, process and mode comes from the fact that you, you are in control of picking which node you're going to go from. As long as it's going to be a node belonging to, to the D minor pentatonic, you're good to go. So uh, what I played now was starting on the D, F, G, D, then starting on the G, G, A, C, uh, G, the same motif we played before, one, two, three, one. So now I'm going to try to show, you, show it to you uh, with the play along again. And what we're going to do is I'm going to play the motif, then I'm going to do a bar break, and I'm going to play it again. Let's, let me try. So it's very effective here is that all of the all of the notes you're playing are always going to sound good, but you're still uh, in control of your improvisation, meaning that the creative process comes from the fact that you're picking the random notes on the spot, on the fly. So although you know the motif because you practice already the scale in a fixed manner, you, um, you're just going to pick random notes uh, to start with. And that's going to create some sort of melody. Um, I'm sure you've noticed one other uh, aspect, important aspect, is that the last note is going to be super short, and I'm, I'm trying to not to play it too straight. So let me just demonstrate you how not to play it, because that's going to just lower the quality of these notes. So although all the notes you're playing are, are fine, um, the way you play this is more important. So let me just play it in a more classical way, way now. <laughs> care about the length of the notes and I deliberately made the last note much longer um, and although it's very hard for me to to make a mistake now I try all, all my best to to get out of time as well and so important lesson here is to keep in mind that timing is everything 
and that do, you don't, do not want to play in a very, very straight fashion. Um, and the only way to, to develop the sort of swing feel is by, by transcribing just a short, tiny bits of the solo of your favorite artists, um, and then maybe recording yourself and comparing it to it. And then, try, of course, trying to apply the same vocabulary, slotting that in on uh, the blues. So an idea would be to play or any other motif in a very swing fashion. So if I go one, two, three, four. And so on and so on. You always try to lay it back. It's not slowing down as such because you're still playing in time, but if um, it's just basically not ahead of the beat, but rather just laying back a little bit, very relaxed way of playing. So that's going to improve all these motifs or any notes for that matter that you're going to pick from the, from the minor pentatonic um, immensely because it's the way you play it, not the notes. Because all the notes from this scale, as I said many times before, will fit. They're going to be fine. But still, you're playing and you're thinking, oh, why is it not working? And it's just because of the feel and because of the way you're playing it. So pay attention to, to in this case, of one, two, three, one motif to the very last note. And if you're playing saxophone, um, a, a tip for you, you have to tongue every other note in this case. If we go in four quavers mode, so fa, ta, wa, ta, and last note shorter. Um, because we always finish the phrases in jazz with an accent and a short way okay so similarly you can of course apply the same thing with the um with the other motif the digital thirds but just to continue on that um work we started creative work we started doing with the um one two three one motif why don't we now uh, try to start on the beat in, in different parts of the bar just random again and again random notes um the previous example when i played it i tried to start on the first beat of first bar then do a rest for a bar, and then again starting the first beat of the new bar. So let me let me try to play it now in different beats of the bar. <laughs> this one which is we can play two motifs one after the other and at the moment we still stick in the first motif which is one two three one again based on the D minor pentatonic but uh, during that uh, soloing now it just happened that I played one after the other so not so I didn't want to lose a beat and it just came out through improvisation that I played first motif glued to the other motif so now I'm gonna deliberately do that again um, but my limitation and the structure I'm going to use is going to be to use only two motifs next to each other. So I'm going to go one, two, three, uh, one, and again one, two, three, one. So I'm going to play eight quavers and then I'm going to do a rest. Let's have a lesson to it. <laughs> countless possibilities but just make sure you either write down on paper or, or make a little contract with yourself that you're going to stick to that particular exercise where in this case as in this case um, you're going to do only one two motifs at a time of course once you're good at it you can you can increase the amount of motifs you, you're taking or just basically change, change the variables um, and that really, really is going to push your creativity because as you're going to notice, uh, it's not that easy to, especially when you're starting out and you're a beginner, 
to to just um, you know play on the fly and think on the fly. Um, but of course, the first exercise I told you about today, which is playing in a fixed manner, almost classical way, all these scale and motifs, is just going to make it all easier for you, technically speaking. Um, but of course, the creative side is, is another aspect of that needs to be practiced separately. So then, um, one final thing now. I want you to, after all this work, try to um, just go going for it. So, so, so just try to use that scale to improvise over the whole form of the blues. Uh, and then, if, if you if you hear that that your brain is telling you to play one of these motifs, just 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 go for it as well. It's very important to just just fiddle around sometimes using the tool um, you, you found out about. Um, because again, it's a it's a good exercise. So let me just just try to play one chorus just freely. Um, the only limitation I'm going to have is uh, I'm going to use the the, the minor pentatonic, no other notes. today is to keep in mind that the uh, single most important thing in your improvisation is the rhythm. That's why deliberately I try to limit that motif to four quavers. So many times all the mistakes you or um, the way you sound, you not want to sound like uh, during improvisation you're not happy with, comes from the fact of you picking the wrong rhythm or not being conscious enough about um, the rhythm you're playing. So here deliberately I picked four quavers, so fixed rhythm, and it's gonna always work as long as you're gonna uh, accent that second and the fourth quaver while shorting the last fourth uh, quaver. It's always gonna work fine, um, um, and just stick to it. And you can play the whole solo actually using just these. Um, the final, very final um, aspect I want to talk about is the phrasing. So don't just just throw all the notes and play without stopping. Um, that's not going to help your solo, and you're always going to wonder why it does not sound as, as good as, as it could. So the way to do, deal with that is to deliberately try to play maximum one and a half to two bar long phrases. Again, you can use uh, the motif I gave you or uh, exercise or just, just simply the scale itself. You can watch the screen if you're not sure where, where um, the end of the second bar is, or just try to think of it like a little tiny phrase, usually a musical phrase that is, usually that will finish within two bars. Let me just show you how to do this. If you're just starting in the random places, like on the second beat, uh, if you're a beginner and you not, don't know what you're doing, that's not the very best way to go forward with it. So always start on the first beat of the first uh, two bar group, and then just, just keep playing this little solo maximum two bars long. Um, yeah, so at the end of the day, this is where you should start, I believe, because there's so much, so many materials out there that might confuse you and you think about this all these modes and mix lydian lydian scales what it all means and harmony as well so before you even you even dive into it why don't you just start just with the f blues it doesn't need to be now's the time any f blues will do like straight note chaser for instance um, um and if you don't have the access to either you can always use um same play alongs that are for free on youtube just uh it's purely enough to just type in the phrase F uh, blues 
uh, play along and it's gonna show you some some options there make sure that the play along you pick though is not gonna be too fast I would, I would just go around 100 120 mark or, or less of course and it's just gonna play the, the music for you of course the disadvantage of, of doing that is uh, the fact that you cannot slow down the music or or see where you are on the phone itself um, nevertheless it's still a good option um, okay I think that we're gonna wrap up today. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, because this uh, live, live Facebook Live is gonna be on, on uh, my fan page, uh, you can just find me at saxophoneteacher.net. If you have any questions, just send me an email or a comment under this video and I'll, I'll definitely respond to you. You can send me an email with any questions you might have regarding this video or any problems you might have as a beginner um uh, just just improvisation remember this video can be used not only by by saxophone players so please feel free to share it with anyone you think would benefit from it and hopefully if you if you enjoy it we'll, we'll do more of these in the future um, i also recommend my youtube channel saxonteacher.net where you'll find uh, different aspects different videos about uh, not only just improvisation but also um, uh, just theory and harmony so stay in tune and I hope to see you soon thanks